Britain harbours many tales of supernatural canines, from the Black Dog of Newgate to the ghostly hounds of Dartmoor, the Scottish and Irish Coo Sith, or Fairy Dog of Scotland, the Lean Dog of Tring in Hartford, the Church Grim of both British and Scandinavian folklore, and the Barguest of the Yorkshire Dales. There are countless myths and monikers for ghostly dogs in the British Isles. While I would like to explore and retell each spectral dog myth by region, there is one of particular notoriety I have always been fascinated by. I am, of course, speaking of the legendary hellhound Black Shuck. Origin, East Anglia. Most spectral black dogs of the East tend to subscribe to particular behaviours and physical attributes. He is largely considered male, unnaturally large in size, and nocturnal in nature. Virtually all British paracanines are reported to wear shaggy, unkempt coats, have large, fiery or lamp-like eyes, frequent or patrol byways, lonely footpaths and roads, crossroads, marshes, riverbanks, churches, places of tragedy or places and landmarks associated with morbidity, such as a gallows or grave. It is no coincidence that the black dog is synonymous with depression. Most of these points are places of transition. In the ancient past, superstitious communities regarded roads to be weak spots in the fabric dividing the mortal world from the supernatural. This lends credence to the belief that paracanines are from another plane of existence, usually hell itself. Placing Shuck's origins in hell is probably due to the propensity of encounters and legends that note fiery shining or glowing eyes, and the ancient association between the colour of black and evil. The name Shuck may derive from the Old English word shucker, meaning demon or devil. There are many Old English dictionaries, most published around the turn of the 20th century, here we can see in Henry Sweet's Student's Dictionary of Anglo-Saxon from 1897 the entry for shucker, clearly stating the aforementioned meaning. When looking up shucker online, we are told it is an Old English word of unknown etymology, perhaps from the Proto-Germanic sku, meaning to frighten. Another definition is fiend, which in Old English translates as feond, but only refers to an enemy of demonic nature in Middle English. Examples of variants of Shaka can be seen in the epic poem Beowulf. In Leonard Nydorf's book, The Dating of Beowulf, A Reassessment, he suggests that the reason Shaka is known as meaning devil or demon is because the two most important complete dictionaries of Old English at the time of print, Bosworth, Toller and Clark Hall, give the distinctions devil and demon as the only meaning for Shaka. He states this is not surprising, for in the majority of its occurrences, the word shucker is used clearly as a synonym. A more rustic origin for shuck may lie in the dialectal shucky, meaning shaggy, unkempt or rough-haired. Other paracanines such as rugman, scarf and shug monkey appear to derive from words also meaning shaggy, lending to the probability that shucky is the root. A common misconception labels Norse mythology as the creator of shuck. There are numerous assertions made in modern literature that the beast is none other than the Hound of Odin, the one-eyed Allfather, chief god of the Germanic pantheon. This legend states that Shuck, known supposedly in Norse mythology as Shukir, was Thor's and Odin's huge dog of war, who in its earthly manifestation was transported aboard a Viking longship and delivered upon the shores of Britain over a thousand years ago. There is no evidence supporting this assertion, however. Neither Odin nor Thor are described as having a faithful dog named Shakir anywhere in Norse mythology. It is a fallacy. Odin did have two wolves named Geri and Freki, who accompanied him into battle. Some have purported that black dog legends are prevalent at places where the Vikings landed. No place names in Scandinavia, however, relate to any spectral hound monikers. Patricia Dale Green sums up a concrete conclusion on the matter in her 1966 book, Dog, where she notes, Some people believe that dog phantoms derive from Viking myth. This theory is, however, untenable, at least from an historical and geographical point of view, 
for dog ghosts appear prolifically in parts of England uncontaminated by Nordic beliefs. The first written account of a shuck-like phantom can be read in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle in an entry for the year 1127. At Peterborough, immediately after the arrival of Abbot Henry of Poitou to the Abbey, many men both saw and heard a great number of huntsmen. They were black, huge and hideous, and rode on black horses and black he-goats, and their hounds were jet black, with eyes like saucers and horrible. This event became known in folklore as the Wild Hunt, and is present in several separate cultures. In Scandinavia it was believed that the Wild Hunt was led by Odin himself. As you may have noticed, this account is local to Peterborough, which is in Cambridgeshire, and not Anglia. As an introductory vision of a shuck, however, it is relevant, for the physical attributes are identical to our Anglian shuck, notably its black coat and terrible saucer-like eyes. The earliest account of black shuck in Anglia comes from Abraham Fleming's 1577 tract, A Strange and Terrible Wonder. The article recounts the most famous appearance of Shuck at St. Mary's Church in the market town of Bungay, Suffolk, in August of 1577. Regarded as the devil himself in the guise of a hellish black dog, he appeared during a terrific thunderstorm and proceeded to pound down the body of the church with great swiftness before wringing the necks of two people and with some force gripping the neck of another who instantly shriveled up like a piece of leather scorched in a hot fire. This man, however, it is said, did not die from his wounds. On leaving the church, the beast clawed at the door with its talons and left his mark. The storm and the dog, it is said, then moved off to nearby Blytheborough. Another legend states that the ruins of Bigod's Castle, also in Bungay, are Shuck's favourite haunt. Here we can see the ruins with St. Mary's Church in the background. Bigod's Castle is named after Hugh Bigod, the first Earl of Norfolk, who died in 1176, and whose damned soul is said to haunt the earth around the castle in the form of a dog. Moments after his attack at Bungay, Shuck arrived at Blytheborough, and again bounded into a parish church, this time placing himself upon a beam high up, and swung down instantly, slaying two men and a boy, and burning the hand of another bystander. He then flew with wonderful force out of the church in a hideous and hellish likeness, scratching the door as before in Bungay. These marks are present still, as seen in this photograph. There are approaching a thousand reported eyewitness accounts of Shuck across Norfolk, Suffolk, Essex and Cambridgeshire, and almost a hundred reported origin legends. Perhaps the most evocative is that of Tom Starlings, who in 1961 gave his account on film at his home in Sheringham. Old Shuck, yes, I see him, I should say, about 30 years ago. And where I see him was coming from Salt House into Kellen. What a wonderful night it was, I always remember. The moon was at its fullest. In fact, I'd never seen such a beautiful night. And as I was pushing the old bike, I heard these rattling of these chains. And I thought to myself, oh, well, that's nothing, that's just a matter of a, a horse straying off the marshes. And uh, that kept coming nearer and nearer. And I thought, said, well, I'd better stop here and let it pass. Well, as I got on the corner and I let it, as, uh, let it pass, as I thought, and it was past me as a form as a great big black shaggy dog. And do you know what? There was a gate dead opposite, and that passed through this gate. Well, being inquisitive, I thought to myself, well, I'll see where it's gone. Well, when I got to the gate, that never had been opened. So I said to the villagers the next night when I got there, the whole story, and they said, well, that's nothing. That's what they call old Shuck. He roamed these roads pretty frequently. He's been seen many a time. But I said I'd never see anything like that before. What I love about this clip is the expression Tom imparts at the end, as if the vision of old Shuck has been reignited in his memory. It is a troubled, knowing look that for many confirms their suspicions. At this point, it is worth mentioning some key researchers in the paracanine phenomena. They include Nick Stone of Invisible Works in Norwich, Mike Burgess of Hidden East Anglia in Lowestoft and Shuckland, Suffolk historian and author Ivan Bunn, who passed his research on to Burgess, Mark Norman of Devon, who collated an impressive 750 key UK eyewitness accounts in his book, Black Dog Folklore, 
and the late artist and folklorist Theo Brown. Much of the information presented here is a result of their extensive research and as such deserves recognition and credit. The Black Shuck legend is far too immense to discuss in a 10 minute video. There is much I would have liked to have included but wanted to keep the video concise and informative. In a future video I would like to return to the legend and retell further eyewitness accounts and origin stories. Thank you for joining me on this installment of British folklore, myths and legends. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, share and subscribe. I'll see you next time.